Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. Pleased to be joined by Brad Thomas, the head football coach at Hazlitt High School. How's it going? It's going well. Just busy this time of year. This is always this is the busiest time of the year for both uh, for you and well as well for me too. But um, uh, you know, it's obviously you know an exciting. It's going to be an exciting year. I know you bring back a uh, you know. I know there's been a lot of excitement around what you what you've been doing in Hazlitt, and this is going to be a really big year for you guys. So how is practice going for for uh, so far in these first few weeks? Good. There's been, uh, you know, we've had some good leadership from our seniors and kind of setting the expectations of, of what we expect out of them for the, you know, tempo and physicality and, and just kind of how we practice. And they've done a great job with that. And the kids have been pretty locked in. I think uh, we are starting to hit that point here early in the second week where I think they're ready to uh, put their pads on someone else. So we got the four way on Thursday. Um, but to this point, they've really, uh, you know, stepped up to the plate and each day we've really seen a, a, an improvement from them. So that's been a testament to how hard they've worked. Okay, so now it's time to talk about some of the guys that are going to be returning and some of the guys that are going to be some to watch for this team. So let's start at the skill positions, you know, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and we'll go from there. Okay, so our quarterback uh, will be Eric Lardy. Uh, This year will be a junior. He's a uh, three-sport athlete. He's been a varsity athlete in basketball uh, and lacrosse already, and this will be his first year on varsity in football. So he's got quite a bit of varsity experience, just not at football. Um, does a great job, good leader. Uh, really looking forward to, to seeing what he continues to bring as, as he's brought it throughout the summer and the off season and uh, in the first couple of weeks of camp here. Uh, on the backfield, uh, we have a couple guys, uh, but Nakia Mockery is kind of a big uh, one name that we hear a lot about. Oh yeah, he's obviously uh, a pretty good player, uh, pretty special talent that we have back there. But you know, he's really stepped up his leadership as well and kind of bringing along some of our younger guys and, and showing them how how we practice, how we communicate. You know, the expectations that we have. So it's been. Pretty good there. We return uh, Braden Stellard on the perimeter as well. He didn't play as much uh, wide receiver last year. He was an all league defensive back for us last year at uh, our one of our safety positions. But he'll be out there at wide receiver. And then uh, Nakai's brother Corey Mockery will be in that mix. He's a, a sophomore. And then uh, Carter Gerard and uh, Dontrell Dennis. We got a couple of guys that um, we'll we'll be filtering in there as well. But some of the guys have really stepped up. Okay, let's go to the offensive and defensive line. Uh, so offensive line wise, um, some of the returners we've got, uh, we've got Luke Armstrong, uh, who played guard for us last year, uh, Caleb Fisher, one of our tackles and Greg Miles, uh, one of our tackles as well. Those are the three returners up front. And uh, we, you know, we bring up some really hungry junior linemen from our JV team from last season. Um, we've got a lot of position battles going on there. So as far as like starters, we haven't fully hammered those uh, in yet, uh, but the scrimmage will go a long way for doing that. But Got a lot of guys that have been working hard. Uh, Grayson Romy, Jason Thibodeau, Adam Green, uh, Landon Bowers, uh, just a lot of guys that have really been competing for spots and kind of really helping each other step up every day. We, you know, we go at each other pretty hard. And I think, you know, they, they've really grown throughout this process, but, but they're a good group. That junior group is a strong group. They, they play really hard. Okay. So going in and also, oh, wait, never mind. Uh, let's, uh, let's go to linebackers in secondary. All right. So linebackers in secondary. Uh, linebackers, we return Brody Quinn, uh, linebacker for us this year. And then we've got a position battle uh, for some of our other linebacker spots. And uh, Lee Dudasak, uh, Jake Otke, um, Dawson Dabler, and I'm missing one name, Ben Bishop, sorry, uh, will be uh, competing for some of our other linebacker spots there. And those will just kind of shake themselves out, uh, especially, like I said, the four-way goes a long way for determining that. I think we we have some ideas on how things are going so far, but definitely once you once you've got to bring another person to the ground, where in practice we don't really live tackle uh, as much as uh, when basically when I was growing up, it's much different how we practice now. Um, you, know, you got to confirm you know what's going on, or hey, maybe this kid stepped up and did some great things there. So on uh, the secondary wise, uh, Dontrell Dennis uh, is one of our uh, you know uh, defensive backs that uh, had got some varsity playing time last year. Uh, we'll expect some big things out of him. Braden Stellar, like I talked about. Uh, start at safety for us. Um, and then we've got a, a couple of the other skill guys that I've already mentioned that'll be uh, filtering in there as well. So just kind of depends on how we put all those pieces together. Okay. Um, all right. So we've, now we've talked about the players. Let's talk about the schedule. And as, uh, and as you probably are aware, the CAAC is always a, a very, very competitive and tough conference and uh, doesn't get it. And of course you kicked it off to how you did it last year, of course, at De- of course at DeWitt. Um, August 31st, you'll be home against Fenton, uh, September 8th at St. John's, September 15th, home against Lansing Eastern, September 22nd at Mason, September 29th at Fowlerville, October 6th, home against Williamston, October 13th, home against Lansing Waverly, 
and October 20th home against Jackson to finish out the regular season. So a pretty good schedule. And this is, and as, uh, as um, you and I are well aware, this, uh, the CAAC Reds obviously going to be tough. And obviously when you talk about um, a lot of people have you and Mason kind of, kind of like one and two right now in, uh, in really ends up there, but there's a lot of really tough teams, obviously Williamston. And then you look at Fowlerville and St. John's and, and uh, Eastern as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, I think the, what's different a little bit with our uh, schedule uh, now is just how many, just the, the bigger schools that we're playing in some of our non-conference and some of those uh, top teams, I think right away, we're going to know in weeks one and two, where we stand. I think you obviously look at DeWitt, a team that went to the semifinals last year uh, and Fenton and a team that went to a district final and have been in district finals and regionals. And, you know, they, that is a very good program over there. So week one and two, we're going to find out real quick uh, what level of football we're willing to play this year. But um, you know, that's a great test early on, but then we get right into the meat of the CAAC red schedule, you know, St. John's, uh, you know, coach Schmidt up there, they do a great job of coming off the football. They're very physical. Always. Uh, they got some, they're well coached. They play extremely hard. It's, it's a really always a tough place to play up there at St. John's. Uh, they do, um, they do a nice job with the, the field and everything, but it's just, it's a tough place to play. Their home crowd's really good. Uh, we got Eastern, like I said, that's a team that uh, runs a triple option. So that's always something tough to prepare for. Um, so we got to make sure we're, we're buttoned up going into that week. Uh, they do a lot of blitzing defensively. Um, then you get into Mason and obviously, you know, we know a lot about them. They've been to two straight semifinals. They've returned uh, a chunk of their kids uh, as well. And that's a well-coached and really, it's a good program. It's yeah. great to go against them every year. And I think, you know, coach Houghton and his staff has done a great job at developing those kids. And, and they've got a really good uh, group of seniors this year that they've had up on varsity for a couple of years now. And, I, I, you know, they're hoping to take that step beyond the semifinals. I know they're, they're super hungry for that. Like you said, then you continue through the schedule, you get into Fowlerville. It's a tough, absolutely tough nose program. They're going to fight you for four quarters. Uh, you get into Williamson is one of our local rivals here. You know, we were able to beat them. We wouldn't beat them in a couple of previous years. Last year we were able to, but they're real well coached. Coach Kirsten does a great job over there with those guys. Uh, Waverly brings a ton of athletes. They'll be, uh, they're, they're super athletic. They do a lot of things on the perimeter. Uh, and then Jackson, uh, they had a new coach last year, did a great job. They were able to, I think they won, uh, oh, they lost in the first round of the playoffs. I don't remember, but they got to the playoffs. They had a good group. They're doing a good job with that coaching staff down there as well. So uh, we really don't see any like uh, gap weeks on our schedule. So we know weeks one through nine, we're going to get tested every week. And that's uh, it's kind of how you want it to be. Well, yeah, there's no gap weeks ever because every team is a good team. Just so just uh, you never know what can happen in this sport. Absolutely. Um, Okay, so let's talk about the. Uh, I know you got the scrimmage coming up in a few days. Um, where are you heading? Uh, we'll be home for that, and we have uh, uh, Holt, South Lion East, and Lowell coming over for that. Okay, and so yeah, I mean, you know, four teams from you know four different areas. You got Holt from right here in Lansing, of course, uh, East from the Metro Detroit area, and then of course you have uh, Lowell from the west side of the state. So. Uh, how do you think it's how do you think it's going to go really what are you really looking for in that scrimmage because I know obviously a lot of coaches are looking at maybe position battles and all that stuff maybe settling some of those before you head into that first game but and also really what do you want to see out of your team heading into that and heading into that first game and really in the next few weeks yeah I think uh, you know you number one you want to go into the scrimmage and you want to come out healthy I think it's the first uh, above yeah. all else but but beyond that I think the biggest piece is going into an understanding like that you're willing to step up to the plate physically and mentally and being able to step in there. I think, you know, Lowell, Holt and South Lion East. I mean, you're talking about Lowell comes off the football as hard as anyone in the state. That, that's a very physical football team. They do, they do a lot of good stuff and um, they're extremely tough. Uh, South Lion East, they run a lot of the power boot counter. Like they, they're coming right at you and Holt, same thing. They've got some big bodies and good athletes on the perimeter. So we're tested in three straight games physically uh, it's three varying offenses. They're all different there. So defensively, it lets your kids, you know, how do we attack angles? How do we get off blocks and, and, you know, different types of offenses. But I think the big thing is physicality and offensively, like coming off the football, do we finish runs or are we, uh, you know, are we finishing blocks? Are we, are we getting to our right assignment? Are we, do we know where we're supposed to go, even though we know we're going to make mistakes and we'll miss a block? Are we missing it mentally or are we getting there and then the kid beats us and it's physically right? You're hoping that the mental mistakes are a minimum. And you know you're going to have physical mistakes, but if you can limit the mental ones, I think the physical ones will eventually take care of themselves as you continue to get more reps. So I think that's the big thing, just the, coming into it, seeing how physical you are, or, you know, how 
Can you know? Can you bring ball carriers to the ground consistently offensively? Can you get some of those tough yards in, in a scrimmage? It's third and two. Are you able to get the tough yards one way or the other? However, uh, the the team's giving you the opportunity to do that. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. All right, Brad Thomas, the head football coach at Hazlitt High School. Thanks so much for joining us, and best of luck to the Vikings this coming season. Thanks, you, Casey. Appreciate it.